hello everybody I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my halfling guide so halflings are very unlike every other team in Blood Bowl in that they are all about the inducements they can get and one inducement in particular which is the halfling master chef even goblins who like getting bribes for cheap are not the same as halflings halflings essentially require the halfling chef and his impact is outstanding so um, I'll do a little section on the inducements after looking at the team builds. Um, I think this is a pretty nice starting and basically finishing team build. You can see there you're 710 TV. This is what I would take and basically the only skill that I would ever take is leader on the halfling hefty. Then that gets you to three rerolls and then puts you at 730 TV. That means you can induce Halfling Master Chef, Puggy Bacon Breath, and Cindy Pie Whistler. So that would be my th my three inducements, which perfectly fit 7:30 to a starting team. Now, of course, you wouldn't always spin into a starting team. Uh, certainly not a thousand TV starting team. Right, they could be a 980 starting TV team, but that would be essentially the plan. Um, so yeah, look at the players as well, eh? So this is the Tree Man. Um, it's incredible. 120 TV does not have loner. It's like a uh, wood elf tree man, except it's got timber, so you can uh, help it stand up here if you have a bunch of halflings next to it. So a lot of the time you'll want to try and keep your halflings behind the tree so they can help it stand back up if possible. Of course, your opponent's going to be trying to stop you doing that, but um, very, it's you know it's very good. It's, it's tree. It's great at throwing because a strong arm. It's got stand firm, mighty blow, it's got strength 6, it's got thick skull, it's AV 11 plus. It's obvious glaring weakness is movement 2, which makes them very, very, very mobile. If they get knocked over, they've got to stand up, they've got to roll to stand up. So, oh yes, yeah, so sorry, that's what Timber does. You're getting the plus 1 for the halflings helping you stand up. And the other massive negative is take root. So on a 1 they can't move for the rest of the drive. So you do kind of need a bunch of rerolls because you do not want your trees getting rooted and you do not want them falling over to failed blocks. You want to block on 3 dice every chance you get your strength 6 so you should get a lot of chances to make them 3 dices. And yeah, another very important part of the game for halflings is throw teammate. And they can, uh, they can throw the teammate so... I mean, the trees are the stars of the show, you know. Sorry, halflings. But the trees are the half star of the show. They can absolutely murder teams all by themselves. They are great. Um, so the, the typical halfling you see here is the same as the human team. 30k, very cheap. Only movement 5. That is actually a big problem, right? Your, your fastest players are essentially movement 5, which is not fast. <laughs> Strength 2, very weak. Edge 3 plus is okay. PA4 plus is, isn't that bad actually. And AV7 plus is very, very low. I mean, they're very cheap, they're very fragile. What keeps them alive a little bit is dodge, of course. A lot of opponents at low TV will be lacking in block. Most of them will be lacking in tackle. So they, they actually are quite durable, surprisingly durable, not quite durable, surprisingly durable for their stat line. Right stuff so they can get thrown by tree men. And Stunty is also critical to their success. They are not; their agility tests are not modified by tackle zones, so they can dodge straight into a cage, like you know, a three-person cage. They can just dodge that into that on a three plus instead of a six plus. So they dodge anywhere they want, but they do have, they do only have like dodge and agility three plus, so they only get one free reroll. All of their dodges carry an 11% chance of failure. So every dodge you do is still quite risky, quite decent chance of failing, but also, you know, huge chance of success. So they can often do crazy plays, going through multiple tackle zones and, you know, picking up balls, scoring, all sorts of things they can do. Um, so it, it is really, it is actually quite great. But yeah, the Agility 3 Plus is a big weakness because while you can do lots of good things, you can also... You know, fail. And oh, sorry, yeah, I forgot to do this. What skills they like? So, halflings like no skills really. You could random agility on them to try and get a sneaky git for 10 TV. That's about all they want. <laughs> a regular halfling. 
they can maybe get sneaky git for 10 tv you could also random general and keep a dirty player and then skill them properly into sneaky git later but again i like keeping these without skills and it's actually the same with the tree men even though you know they get uh, they get strength skills which would normally you would take stand firm and mighty blow which you can't you could take guard on them which is okay but again it's a lot of tv right you re we really want to limit tv as much as possible also a double for block is incredible um ah, sorry secondary you know you can't really afford to random them because i mean you could right what you could do is what you could do in an unlimited format like this is you could stockpile star player points and then you could random and if you get block then you keep them right and otherwise you replace them if you have the money so so you could just try and random block that would be fine absolutely no problem at all with just trying to random block um even though you're only hitting one in 12 if you replace if you've got the money to replace anyway why not some people like pro it does give you a 50 50 chance to avoid getting rooted and it does help with throw teammate marginally but again you don't have loner you've got rerolls, team rerolls for these trees you don't really value pro as much for the agility side of it you could get defensive you know that's pretty good makes them basically invincible because if if they're next to the other tree or you know a star player or something you could also get jump up which of course completely re relieves them of their four plus to stand up and also let them, lets them move two squares in addition and that would only cost 10 if you randomed it so and dodge would be funny wouldn't it you know like it would make them again kind of make them semi-invincible so getting these for 20 tv i think probably only only the jump up is is what i'd want realistically and then characteristic wise plus movement is just unbelievable right that gives the movement three means they don't have to roll the stand up four plus to stand up so so movement is a great one i would generally stockpile spp and then roll roll a stat and maybe keep the movement guy but it would depend again on your overall tv and what you what you're spinning into um so yeah that's them the halfling hefty so this is the guy who he has passing on primary he's got the same stat line as a normal halfling except he's got plus av which is worth 10 plus pa which is worth i think 20 and he's got fend but he does, loses right stuff so you can't throw this guy, but he gets he gets leader, and uh, I would just choose leader. I would get that as soon as possible. Gives you a bit more reliability. Three re rolls, um, yeah, and just just keep him on leader, you know. And then if if you force to spend star player points, try and get uh, plus AV because it's only ten TV. So just yeah, there's not a lot to them, you know. You, you could try and build them with. With, you know block and sidestep but the way that halflings work is they want to be facing as low a tv team as possible because you don't want your opponent to have tackle and you don't want your opponent to have mighty blow and so like you know even even like you know like let's say orcs right which orcs you don't really want to play because they go for block but they if they get skills they're going to get mighty blow pretty quickly and mighty blow tackle you know, eviscerates you. You do not want to face a mighty blow tackle going around killing a killing a halfling every turn. You don't want them to have guards so they can hit your trees. You just so so as much as you know, there's a there's quite a cool little feature here in Blood Bowl Three, where you can add to your TV for matchmaking purposes. Let's say up to three hundred. But the thing is, you don't want to be. You don't want to set this at six hundred, right? You don't want to face a thirteen hundred team. A thirteen hundred team is going to really massacre you. So you probably set this at 300 and uh, you know try and spin in starting teams. Um, so yeah, I would not take the catcher in this in this uh, instance, but I will buy him now just to show you what he is. He's actually quite good. <laughs> His PA is worse. He's, he's 25 more and he has catch and sprint which is okay isn't it right like it's it what what it's doing is it's making it's not a great deal but it's making the super fling more possible 
so he keeps right stuff, dodge stunty, he gets sprint and catch, which are two skills that help with scoring a one turn. So how would you utilize that? Well, as I say, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't normally, right? I, I think that a not super fling is the best way. I think this kind of build plus leader is the absolute best for ladder, just spinning the starting teams. But some people, you know, are mad lads and they want to build big halflings. And to do that, you need block trees, you need movement trees. Fantastic. I mean, this is the best TV you can spend. Now, I've just selected block here. Again, you could random these blocks if you're going to play a million games. You could randomize for block. And, and, but the thing is, the trees, you know, are going to get hit a fair bit. So, so, you know, you could just choose block as well. But it's a lot of TV. But again, I don't recommend doing this. This is 1100 TV, this team. Um, again, leader on the hefty. Sneaky git. Like, you could random agility on all of your halflings when they level up keep sneaky gits that's okay but then you would want to make a player like this guy <laughs> a super fling plus two movement your big big weakness is halflings is movement so two movement is huge also the catcher starts with sprint so you can give him sure feet as well so this guy's nearly movement 10 right really super fast agility two plus you can go anywhere on twos. Halflings with agility two plus are incredible. Fast halflings are incredible. Now I put in two plus AVs here to finish him off. You know, you need this guy to survive. Having plus AV is very good, right? If, if people knock this guy over, they will foul him 100%. He, he can get thrown by the tree and land, you know, fail to land, and then he's gonna take AV rolls. So it's, it's really very good to give him plus AV. What you could do is, of course, you could like you know start him off by randoming block or something. A block would be totally fine. Block and eight plus would be completely reasonable. You could also give him sidestep. You know, sidestep's a great skill. But um, I'm really all for armor value at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd look like a kind of a bigger team. But again, I would not recommend this. But some people like that. So if you like that, you know, I think that's what to do. Um, so the only thing left to do is to look at the star players and stuff. So here we have the inducement screen in Blood Bowl 3, all the inducements you can get. So yeah, here's the Halfling Master Chef. This is 300,000 for any other team, but only 100k for them. You roll 3d6, each 4 plus gives you a team reroll and removes a team reroll from the opposition team. In in the rules back in 1994, it used to act actively steal them from the opposition. That isn't how it works. So if your opponent only has one reroll, you can still get three. Um, but they will obviously lose theirs. It also doesn't affect leader rerolls. So, you know, if you expect a lot of halflings, having a leader is a good idea. Um, and just lots of rerolls in general, like if, if you're really worried about them. But, uh, you know, the chef is incredible, right? For 100k, you're basically getting one and a half rerolls yourself. And the rerolls are 60k, so you're, you're basically like, you're just getting that anyway. <laughs> and then you're denying it from your opponent as well. So it's, it's, it's an unbelievably good deal. Almost essential. There are times, very rarely, when you wouldn't take it. But... Almost always you're going to be taking the chef. The bias ref is okay, you know, um, especially if you have a sneaky get dirty player so that you can argue the call better. But it's it's not great just because, you know, your team is rubbish, right, with halflings. Sorry, sorry halfling enjoyers. Your players are not good, right? They're not. They're movement five, they're armor seven plus. They're not good players. So you need to equalize the power on the field you, you, the, the chef is taking care of the re-rolls. That, that, that's not actively affecting the field, right? It's, it's very good to have re-rolls, very good for your opponent not to have re-rolls, but you, you need to equalize the mismatch in players. So I don't really rate, the again, unless you load the TV down, I don't rate the referee. Don't Obviously, you take these if you've got, you know, if that's all you can get. You take coaches, like one or two coaches, if that's all you can possibly get. Um, kegs can be okay again if you download the TV but after other things bribes very unlikely to be worth it but if you download loads of TV maybe <laughs> team training almost certainly never and uh, wizard again you've got to be down loads of TV all, all of these things and the apples you've got to be down loads of TV to even think of considering these because you want the chef 
chef is important and then star players that's really what you want and here are all of the stars possible in Blood Bowl 3 for halflings to get so Cindy Pie Whistle is absolutely incredible um, does it show the star yet? Yeah, does there we go all you can eat once a game she can throw two bombs instead of one I mean that is insanely powerful right like it's I think Cindy is better than Bomber um, Dribble Snot now Bomber Dribble Snot has got better stats right because he's you know he's a goblin so he's got better stats than a halfling but I really love her ability throwing throwing two bombs is outrageous and f you do get sent off 50% of the time but you know you've just thrown two bombs so like the things that can happen are unbelievable apart from that she's like a basic halfling um, with PA 3 plus she's got accurate and bombardier if you hadn't guessed from the special i probably should have done that in order um but yeah secret weapon bombardier um with accurate and pa3 plus she's actually incredible only 50k you basically want to get cindy pie whistle every single game you also want to get cindy pie whistle every single game with any team that can get cindy pie whistle cindy pie whistle is incredible is is what i would say about cindy pie whistle so there you go let's have her again this is like the basic team i've i've scheduled them versus a uh you know a starting thousand tv team so yeah i'd get the chef i'd get cindy and i'd get pookie you can see summer grayed out now pookie is he fits <laughs> he's 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 decent the the problem with him is um he's 120k he's got block he's got dodge great Nerves of Steel, not very relevant. Um, Lona, 3 plus. He's a, little bit, he's a little bit better at using rerolls if you have to, but of course you're going to shy away from rerolling him with him, especially Strength 3, which is obviously great. It's like, you, you know, he is worth the TV. He's 100% worth the TV. Um, it's just, again, he, you're not equalizing the discrepancy in players that much with him. Like, he's a good little player, but you drop, you know, and, and you're going to get him a lot probably on ladder. And he's got a really great, really great ability. Once per game, you can u choose to re-roll any single dice, excluding AV, injury, or Kaz rolls. So if he double skulls, he can re-roll that skull. If he fails a GFI to win the game, he can re-roll it. If he's, you know, if he wants to go two squares to, you know, make two dodges to sack the ball, he pops dodge on the first square. He can then use halfling luck to get to the ball carrier and hit them. So I would take him as the second star. In most situations, that's what this team is going to try and get. Now, obviously, in this precise situation, you would get an assistant coach with that 20k left over. Um, but, you know, there are other options, to be fair, for the star players. So, and, and again, these are, these are going to be based on how much you got, but that, that's the baseline. Uh, Griff is unbelievable. Griff Oval there, 280k. He's got the same ability as Puggy, and it's you know it's just as good, right? If he, he now he actually he actually has sprint and show sure feet, so if he's already popped show sure feet, you could reroll another GFI. If he's already popped dodge, you could reroll another dodge. If he dub skulls, he can reroll either. He's got fend, which is pretty decent. Movement seven, strength four, edge two plus. If he nine plus, Griff is a god. So if you end up down that that amount of TV, you know, like. It's a lot, right? 4.30, because you want Griff, you want Cindy, and you want a uh, chef. Griff is a game winner. Absolute game winner. He is incredible. Grombrindal is not a game winner, but he's got his uses. Whether you'd actually use him or not. Let's say not, because you can get Carlevon kill. So, um, Grombrindal and Grim Iron Jaw have the same problem of not being Carla. Um, he's okay, right? He's a dwarf. He's got a, his special ability means he can give somebody break tackle dauntless mighty blow a sure feat. So he can give your halflings dauntless to let them hit people. He could give puggy mighty blow, stuff like this. So he can do things, but ultimately he's just a dwarf. I don't really like him that much. Helmet Wolf is 140. He's a chainsaw. I don't like him much. He does have all pro, which is a really nice ability. It means he can reroll armor or injury rolls once a game. 
but ultimately he's just not that good a star. Same with Grim Angel. Grim Angel is actually a bad star, one of the worst stars. So you can see that he's just a troll slayer with plus strength and his special ability is uh you know not great. It's it's super mighty blow, but it's it's only well it's not super mighty blow because he doesn't have mighty blow, right? So it's 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 mighty blow once a game against a big guy. It's uh it's a sad state of affairs for Grim Iron Jaw. But Carlevon Kill is like a cheap Griff. Movement 6, AV9+, plus, Strength 4, Edge 3, plus, Block Dodge. She's got Dauntless and she's got Jump Up. And once per game, she can like 3 dice a, a big guy essentially, right? Um, so let's say, you know, because to Dauntless it's got to be like Strength 5. So then she'll go to strength 10, and then if she's got an assist, she gets three dice. So the ability isn't terrible. It's not great, because you're not going to use it much. Mostly just paying 210 for a strength 4 blodger, which is nice. It's, it's nice if you can't get griff, basically. Um, but the thing, about, the thing about Carla is she's not Zug. <laughs> so in certain matchups, you'd rather have Zug. Zug is 220. Movement 4, Strength 5, Edge 4+, AV 10+, plus. he's got Block and Mighty Blow, and his ability actually is Super Mighty Blow, so he can get an extra plus 1 to the AV or Injury once a game in addition to Mighty Blow, so he's pretty great, and it means obviously with the two trees you can put Zug between your trees, and it's very hard to, to mess with your LOS, so... So Zug, but again, you know, it depends on the matchup, right? It's all matchup dependent. You've got to make this, these calls yourself as to what stars you get based on how much money you have. And you can't just like tier things and stuff. It's it's everything situational in Blood Bowl, but he's a great player. As, as long as you're taking good stars, you're good. And Morg is the best. <laughs> now you don't want to be down 380 TV, right? Because your opponents will have Guard, Mighty Blow and stuff. But Morg is just the best there is. Move 6, Strength 6, Edge 3 plus, so he can move around, AV 11 plus. He can, he can re-roll through all teammates and passes, which isn't so useful, but he's got Block, and he's got throw teammate, and he's got Thick Skull, and he's got Loner, but he's got Mighty Blow plus 2, and it's unbelievable. <laughs> he, you know, there's games where he just slaughters teams. So that it might actually be better to be down and have Morg sometimes, but... You know, the worst thing is is if you're down and you can't get more, right? Like if you if your opponent's got a really good team that counters you and you 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 know, you you're down a lot of T V but don't get more, it's really bad. I mean the absolute worst amount of T V you can be down is ninety five. Because if you're ninety five you don't get the chef. And you actually you would get you would get Cindy, right? You would get Cindy and uh two two assistant coaches. But I mean Cindy really is is just god tier. Um so yeah, there you go. That's a little bit about the stars, and uh, you know a fair amount about halflings. And hopefully, that's a good little video for you all. So, um, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.